So Junior Roberts here. We're looking at this question here. So this is a Cape physics question and it's under the topic of projectile motion. So it says here that a midfielder in a football match plays a long overhead pass to a striker who is 30 meters away. The ball was kicked with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal from the level ground. So here we have a diagram actually depicting uh, what's happening. So we have the ball being kicked with some initial velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 25 meters per at an angle of 25 degrees from the horizontal. And here we're showing the expected path of the ball. So we expect the ball to take on a parabolic path. All right, so <clears throat> we see our parabolic path right here. Now let us see what the questions uh, require of us. Uh, so let's scroll on a little. So the first thing they want us to do is to calculate the time of flight of the ball. So for the time of flight, we can consider, consider the equation that t is equal to 2u sine theta over g. So what we can do now is we can actually plug in the values. So let's just make a note of some values. So u, we're told, so u is equal to 20 meters per second. So u is 20 meters per second. Uh, the angle theta is 25 degrees and we know that g is 9.8 meters per second squared. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to plug in the values so we can calculate a value for t. So we're going to say 2 times u which is 20 times the sine of theta which is 25 and we're dividing that by 9.8. Now from the calculator, we're going to see that t is equal to, so let's take the calculator, right? And we say that t is equal to, so let's say, let's first simplify this. Um, so t then now is going to be equal to 2 times 20. So we say 2 times 20 times the sine of 25. And that works out to be 16.9, and we're dividing that by 9.8. So again, from the calculator, we say 16.9 divided by 9.8, and we get a value that t, which is the time of flight, is equal to 1.7 seconds. So this is our time of flight, 1.7 seconds. So Let's just uh, make a note. So this is t, the time of flight, 1.7 seconds. Now let's continue. So in B, it says, how far from the striker on the level ground does the ball land? So if we go back to our diagram, right? So what we want to know is in order for us to determine how, from the, how far from the striker the ball will land, we need to know what is the horizontal range. So we need to find, okay, what's the horizontal range from the initial position of the ball to where the ball will land on the ground. So to find that now, we can use the equation where we say R, which is our horizontal range, is equal to U squared sine 2 theta divided by G. So now, we can go to plug our values in. So U is... 20, so we're taking 20 squared, sine 2 theta is um, just 50, since theta is 25, so 2 times 25 is 50, and we divide that by g, which is 9.8. So now, let's simplify. So we're going to get, so 20 squared is, let's get the calculator, so let's say, 20 squared times sine of 50 equal 
306.4 and we divide by 9.8 so let's see what we get so we're gonna get that our range r is 306.4 divided by 9.8 which works out to be 31 so let's write this a little better so we'll get that horizontal range r is equal to 31.3 meters so if the horizontal range is 31.3 meters and we were told that the striker was 30 meters from the midfielder so therefore now the ball right will land so let us say the ball will land um, let us say um, at a distance let's say s right so the ball will land at some displacement in reference to the player where we're going to say that it's going to be equal to uh, 31.3 meters minus 30 meters so s then now will be 1.3 so therefore what we'll see now is that the ball so let me just make a statement so the ball would land 1.3 meters from the striker striker so that's what we will um, notice for this case so the ball will land 1.3 meters from the striker so this is what we would have gotten for part b so let's see now what's next so part c now says we are to find at what height must the player control the ball in order for the pass to be completed